I think of anchoring is that psychological mechanism where with the first person that brings up a price, say if there is no price out there, oftentimes the end negotiation might anchor back more closely to that first price that was brought up. I don't know whether it's wise for one to go first in negotiation or not, or whether it depends, but let me just introduce this. Since we have been talking about the sale of a piece of real estate, Chris, in a sense between seller and buyer, the seller has kind of already begun the negotiation, if you will, because before that buyer even finds out about that property, I can see the price that it's $500,000. I can see this right. fourplex with eight bedrooms and four bathrooms. So therefore, has the seller already kind of gone first in a negotiation or, or does that even matter or who should go first? Yeah, well, if, if you got something that's priced in advance, yeah, the seller's gone first. Now, the anchoring question is a fascinating one and my academic brothers and sisters will tell you to anchor. And the top tier negotiators will say he or she who names price first loses. It's to your advantage on the deals that you made. What about the deals that you blew away from the table? And that's why the academics love it and the top tier negotiators. Like I'm horrified that my anchor is gonna blow a deal I should have made. And that's why I don't wanna leave money on the table. I don't want to not blow deals. You know, every top tier negotiator, and I can remember over, over steak and a scotch, Ned and I, Cleddy and I were talking about this too. It hasn't failed. The people in the business world that are known as the top tier negotiators believe he or she who names price first loses. Because the other side goes first, that's information. Great negotiators are data loving people. You go first, you're giving me data. What happens if I like the price? Now I'm like, oh, here's, I can take this and I can let you believe you had your way. This is a really good price for me. And if I get you to emotionally dig in on this price, which you accidentally gave me a great price, you don't even know it. I'm going to make this deal. Now, how often does that happen? How often does it have to happen? I want to make every deal possible. I do not want to lose a deal over price. Dropping an extreme number drives deals from the table that I should have made otherwise. Now, what we do, as opposed to price anchoring, we do emotional anchoring. I will say to you, look, I give you my price, but you're going to hate it. I mean, I'd love to give you price, but it's going to be so extreme that you're going to get angry. You're going to scream at me. I'm scared you're going to get mad. Now I'm going to shut up. So you're going to imagine a price that's worse than what I'm going to throw out. Now, when I do come up with my price, you're not going to get mad at me because by saying, go ahead, go ahead, you know, just tell me what it is. You've already braced yourself for news that's going to be worse than whatever I say. That's a really so, great technique. You've emotionally anchored me to think about a certain number in my head before any number has been said. Yeah, because of that survival negative wiring that we were talking about before. Yeah. I'm just kicking it into gear to my advantage. I know how it's going to work, so why don't I use it to my advantage?